In this review, we're going to look at Mattel's new Masterverse line, Master of the Universe Revelation, Skill of God. <laughs> Skill of God comes in a big window style box, very reminiscent to the deluxe releases for Marvel Legends. This is very nice packaging. You have artwork on the side and the same artwork on the back with his bio. You want to Pause it here to read that. And on the bottom of the box, you have other pitch, uh, pictures of in the first wave. You have Battle Cat, He Man, Moss Man, Skeletor, the regular Skeletor, and Evil Inn. The Mattel logo, recycling the instructions. And on the bottom, you have the Legal Ease barcode if you need that. On the top, you have the Master Force logo. And you have these glyphs in like in a stone uh, work pattern. 30 points of articulation. Like I mentioned, this is very similar in size and style of the deluxe release Marvel Legends boxes. I have the Red Hulk box here. I have the hang tag like this on top. And Mattel worked incorporated that into the box design instead of using the plastic. The Skill God box is actually thicker and a little bit bigger. There, it's a little bit wider. Get a little close up inside the box. You can see Skull God inside there and his accessories. He's a power sword, two alternate hands, and energy effect. Here we have a Skull God in the plastic tray. Uh, we want to show the back piece too, uh, since it's one of the first figures in the line. On uh, the back of the cardboard, it's got nice stonework if you want to use this for like a backdrop in a detoff or anything. You can get a better look at Skull God in, in the plastic tray with all the accessories. Like I said, the Energy effect, two grip hands, comes with open split hands in the, the tray, the power sword. On the back you can see the cape hanging through, they got the slot through. Here we have Skill God outside of the plastic tray and he looks really good. I'm very impressed with this figure. But first up, let's take a quick look at the accessories. He has two grip style hands. Horizontally hinged. Let's have vertical hinges, which, like I harp on many times before, anytime you're going to have something, a hand to hold something, like a sword or a gun, it needs to be a vertical hinge. The hands look really good. They're very uh, demon like. They got the claw dagger style hands, the sharpness of it. It's almost like a armored gauntlet, but also demonic at the same time. And you have a energy effect for the slide over top of one of these. You would use one of these hands instead of the open uh, display hands that comes uh, packaged on the figure. And you have the power sword. Very different from what we, it's very similar and yet different at the same time of what we think of when we think of He-Man's power sword. We don't normally see a, such a long blade for on the power sword. It's a thin blade with a fuller down the middle. And this is the first time we've ever seen a fuller on the power sword. I have the classic Seaman. You can see it's, they're styled to be very similar. It's got a much longer blade. The fuller down in the center like I mentioned. But you can definitely see the callbacks of the original power sword. The guard has got that signature curve up uh, conformed to the shape of the blade. A little area through here. The hourglass shape through here. One thing I wish they would have done when they did this, you can see they pulled out the detail here on the vintage style or classic style power sword. That raised up section is raised up. On the new sword, I just pulled it off with paint. There's one thing, other thing to be considered an accessory. His cape, it is removable. Now, a lot of people first seen these, they thought these were magnets. These are not magnets. These are just rivets that hold the cape to, onto the plastic piece here. These are not magnetic whatsoever. They're, it connects with these little hooks onto the back here. You can just slide the cape up in. 
Gil God looks really good. The details are really nice. He's very well articulated. Just look at the head on this figure. The head is very wicked looking. I love the look. It almost looks like they brought in the ram horn horns into the helmet of this figure. See, it doesn't come with the Havoc staff. And those horns look like they were part of the, the helmet itself from the Havoc staff. So it absorbed the power of the Havoc staff and the power of Grey School, what I'm guessing. And all merged into one to get Skelly God. The paint on the skull is a little thick. So you lose some of the detail in areas where it's the, they went so heavy with the paint. You can still see the sculpt is there. It's just a little heavy. I like the texture on the horns. The back of the head helmet. You got the raised up. I like that you actually sculpted this stylized H symbol onto the chest. That's not just paint. It's paint, uh, sculpt and paint. The shoulder pads have a very rhino beetle look to them. Now that's kind of interesting motif to go with that, which I don't really think of insect and insects when I think of Skeletor. You know, I also have a the waist uh, piece. That looks like a dragon skull or a demon skull <laughs> uh, staring out at you. The fur texture on the loincloth is very soft. I would like to add a little more detail because when you're used to like really nice clean sculpts from the horseman to soft sculpts like this it's very noticeable. The gauntlets are really nice. They very pulling off the eyes everywhere theme. We've got eyes on the gauntlets. You got the eyebrows bridging the nose. Eyes on the shoulders. Eyes on the waist, skulls on the knee pads. Everywhere you can think of a piece of armor, it's got some eyes staring at you. <laughs> He's got raised up sculpted arm bands. Uh, the same type of uh, bands are on the thighs. The detail on the boots are really nice. You have the skull motif going up on the boots, which goes up almost, works as knee pads. It don't go quite that high. It's very close. It looks like the base color of the figure is a bluish purple. They got a lot of dry brushing, a lot of weather paint over top of that. So you go articulate the figure, you can see the base purple, which is very interesting. I would, have, would assume they would actually use the blue for the base color like most Skeletors are. Got the big clawed toes. Let's do a quick rundown of articulation on Skill of God. His head is on a ball peg. So we can look up, down, plenty of tilt, full 360. Diskin shoulders. Mine were really stiff outside the packaging. There's no butterfly joint, just a standard hinge and swivel. Full 360 if you didn't have the Scarabeetle uh, pauldrons on here. Bicep swivel. Full 360. You have pinless uh, double jointed elbows. You crunch up really well. You have hinge and swivel wrist. The gauntlets are a free floating piece, so they spin. It's not really articulation, it's just part of the design of the armor. Instead of a ab crunch like on the classics figures, or nut, there is no ab crunch on the origins figures, just a waist twist. We have a diaphragm joint, which can crunch forward, crunch back. Uh, there's no twist at it, but you can lean it from side to side. Here's a waist swivel, ball jointed hips. You got the here. The one thing to look out for, both my hips, the thigh cuts were stuck. And I see why. All this weathered paint they put on here, it got up into the thigh cut and they were frozen. I took a blow dryer, heat this up, and I still had a 
pop break it free and this upper thigh piece is a softer rubber so when you heat it up you can easily pop these off the ball joints here pop back on now my thigh cuts move very freely uh, thigh rotation with full 360 double joint knees and go all the way up and kick the upper up his back there is a boot cut swivel hinged ankles and ankle pivots very articulated figure or the most articulated skeletal figure we've ever gotten let's see how much of this armor we can take off this figure we'll take the hands off take the gauntlets off let's pop the head off and the armor looks like either like Motu Classics or vintage style armor where you can just undo the armor. This looks like it's removable, but it is not. I don't understand why they designed the armor to be this way, where it looks like it's removable. Uh, it's because it's glued in. It's glued in at the neck. And it's glued in back here. But you have these little pieces here. You can actually undo the little tabs and pop loose. I would have thought that you could actually just take the whole harness off. The, the shoulder pauldrons have little pegs here and ports here. That's the way it just connects to the figure. I was just curious about seeing how it would look if you take all this off for like maybe kit bashing or customizing later on. One thing I really like what they do with the cape to help the, make it f lay a little better. I wish they would have done it with the bigger part of the cape on these little tassel areas. They put these little diamonds shaped pieces on there. They're weighted down plastic. Helps them flow a little better. I wish they would have done that with the the bigger part of the cape. Or you put some wire, bendy wire in this thing. Would have been nice. Let's go ahead and get the armor back on them. If you take the armor off and you want to put it back in order, and you go ahead and start with the shoulder pads. Then the neck piece that helps hold it in place. Since we already have the head off, let's do some head swaps while we're doing this. First up, of course, it's gonna be the easiest head swap. The origins, they have the same, <laughs> the same size ball joint. We have the origin skeletor. Let's go ahead and plop the flame effect off and make things easier. So it's definitely designed for that small head. Now that looks goofy. <laughs> that does not look right at all. You would need uh, some kind of cape to come over top the shoulder pauldrons uh, to hide the, that neck. Now let's see. Let's try some of the Alcala head from the classics now the ball joints are different sizes Ooh. let's let me heat up some hot water that's the only thing that's the only way we're gonna get these classics heads to start the work I got some hot water I dropped a couple of skele classics skeletor heads in the hot water Let's see. Oop. We're going to get try the Alcala head. After heat, it popped right on. Actually, not bad. I wonder if it'll work with the flame effect. Actually, I like that. That looks pretty good. That style head looks really good on this, but. Without some kind of cape to cover this area, still going to look a little off. I think that looks really good though. I like that. I really like this head sculpt on this body. That looks cool. Actually, a little more proportioned with the body too. But I would like to have a different style cape if I was going to use this style head. 
that would come up over top the shoulders a little bit and flow onto the back. And I like that as an option. And let's see, let's try this standard Skeletor head. So that one sits up, seems like it sits up a little too high. We have a little bit of hot water that popped right on that larger ball joint, no issues. Full range of motion. Just sits too high with, on this body like that. But this head with the lower hood and the style with the rest of the body, it works really well. You know, that looks a lot like the size ball joints that's on a lot of Marvel Legends and G.I. Joe classified figures. Let's see. <laughs> there you go. Powered up Cobra Commander. It fits. It popped right on. <laughs> that so fits. Cobra! Let's do a little bit of comparison with Skelegod with some other Skeletor figures and some other figures from other lines. Here's Skelegod next to the 2008 style Skeletor and the Motu Origin Skeletor. Here he is next to a Master Universe Classic Skeletor and Master Universe Classic He Man. Here he is next to the decayed form of Mumra and Jekyllman. Here he is next to Marvel Legends Iron Man and Captain America. Here he is next to DC Multiverse Bizarro and G.I. Joe Classified Cobra Commander. Here we have Skill God decked out with all those accessories with the energy effect, uh, the power sword. I did say this arm is a little loose. It wants to fall down. It's going to need some uh, joint fix for that. Because it's just, you can see, falls back down into place. Uh, the gauntlets are like really loose. It's not really, really a big deal since they're not part of the articulation. You can just adjust those when needed. The boot cuts are really loose. And the straight up position, the ankles are fine. But when you get to a point, it's right here, it's fine. Once here, there's no locking whatsoever in the ankles. So that's a little annoying. So that's going to need some joint fix as well. It's you the there's the ratchet points are so far in that ankle. It's like up, standard neutral position, back. It's kind of ridiculous, but overall, it's a good looking figure. There's a lot of things I like they did with the figure. Some things I don't. The material, the cape, this felt material. Picks up every little bit of lint and dust, uh, pear. So you need to be careful about cleaning it if you're keeping you some uh, lint tape to clean the sucker off. Um, I don't even allow my pets downstairs, and I already have some cat hair here and here. So I need to get that off. But look, overall, look the figure. It looks great. I would like to have a little sharper sculpting, like within the loincloth areas. The skull is nice, but it's just a tad bit soft. And I would have seen, like seen the more traditional yellow skull uh, for the face. Like, or with like with the, this one is yellow, all black eyes, like in the old style comics. Detail or add a wash to the teeth would have made it pick it out, the details a little better. But they didn't skimp on the paint on this figure. There's a lot of paint on it. And like we've seen, like with some areas, it was too much. The hips, the thigh cuts were stuck because they had too much paint. But the overall design and look of the figure it looks really good. You got the big shoulder pauldrons. It looks like rhino beetles. You got skull motifs going through the figure. You got the, the skull gauntlets, the skull waist piece, the skull uh, boots. Everything, uh, if you didn't know Skeletor is about skulls, there's skulls all over this. The energy effect is nice. It slips over the the uh, one of the grip hands, and the other grip hand holds the power sword really well. Uh, still, uh, like I said, it looks kind of looks like he merged with the Havoc staff when he gained the power of Gray Skull. That's what I'm guessing. What happens here? And still, what I've seen, a Havoc staff come with him. Uh, let's 
while we're doing that, let's, I said that, let's stop the, the spin. I want to see what he looks like with Havoc Staff before we finish up here. And it's going to be plaguing me too with the looseness in the arm, so I'm going to use the Havoc Staff to hold itself up like a tripod. Oh yes, I like that. It kind of completes the look of the Skeletor by giving them a Havoc Staff. The classic Havoc Staff looks great with them. This definitely has a missing presence on your shelf for your, to add to your Skeletor ranks. I like it a lot. Overall looks, I like it a lot. Uh, but, like I said, there are some issues with the figure. We like I already pointed out with the uh, the ankles, the thigh cuts issues, the loose arm. Um, if you're used to customizing, you should be able to fix those. But it's kind of stinks when people have to fix their figures right out of the box. Mattel's been doing this long enough not to have to do that. When you're a customizer, it's not that bad. I, I do custom and repairs and stuff like on toys. It's not an issue, but when for average collectors who don't do customizing, that's rough. But I do like the fact they went all pinless with the joints. There's no pins on the legs or on the arms. That looks great. Even with the issues, I still recommend the figure. It's just a great, imposing looking Skeletor piece to add to your collection if you have a lot of Master Universe collection. I have a huge He-Man Skeletor collection, so this will be going on that shelf. I may or may not pick up the He-Man and Skeletor this line because I'm not really crazy about the looks of those two, but I want to get this one just because it's just a different look for Skeletor. Well, that's all i got to say about this one. Uh, thank you for everyone taking the time to watch the review. Please like, share, subscribe, and any questions, comment down below. And I'll catch you all next time.